And then our audio systems too. Uh, let's see, did anybody, did we have any of the twos on this trip or did we, uh, was it all threes and fives? Okay, so everybody had into capable audio systems. Uh, it sounds like maybe some of our phones may not have been uh, password updated, so I apologize for that. But there are basically three possible audio units you can get in Prius, in Prius B. Uh, this is a display audio. This is your base audio you'll find in the grade two. Uh, it looks very much like the audio systems you had today, but there's a small difference. But the, the, the display screen here is 6.1 inches, and it not only gives you uh, your, your uh, vehicle data and radio data, uh, but you also have a backup monitor capability. So the backup monitor is standard on all Prius Vs. So if you get one, you're going to be able to see out the back uh, using the monitor that shows up in this screen on any of the vehicles. But this system is, is able to do Bluetooth telephone operation. Uh, you can connect it via the USB or the aux port to your uh, iPod device, so it's got the full functionality. Uh, this is an entry level piece, and you can once again see hybrid information that's going on there. If you press the uh, if you press the car button here, it'll give you vehicle uh, display information. Now, what you guys had on your cars was either this or the next one I'm going to tell you about, and this is what we call our, our display audio with Intune and navigation. This is standard equipment on Prius V3 and also on Prius V5. And this once again very much looks very much like its predecessor, but it has an apps button over here on the bezel, and that allows you to get to your navigation and also your, your Intune apps. And once again, you get an idea there too. You can also bring up vehicle information as you go. Oops, I'm going the wrong way here. That's what's wrong. There we go. There's your, there's your nav screen there. I think everybody saw the nav today, right? We tried to have those up and running for you uh, when you took off. Uh, and then finally, if you had a Prius V5 with the advanced uh, technology package and roof package, uh, then you get our premium um, HDD navigation system with uh, JBL audio and Intune. This is our highest end audio unit. This is a 7 inch high res screen. And it does a number of different things here that uh, is handy. One of which is if you go in and you press this map mode button here, you can then, if you want, have multiple displays on the screen. It'll give you map and vehicle functions. It can actually even give you two map views. I like this for long trips because I can have a detailed zoomed in map view on the left and then have maybe a zoomed out version on the right that shows me how my general progress on my road trip is doing. But this one will tell me what I'm close to you know, right there. Uh, so you can kind of change that up which is a nice thing. The other thing that this system does, it's kind of a side feature, is that you can actually play a DVD movie in this system. The car has to be stopped, but you can uh, open the screen up and then uh, put in a DVD if you were going to be parked for a while and you could watch a film. The other thing here that's happened on our JBL audio system, JBL has been our premium audio supplier for a number of years at Toyota, uh, but a couple years back, the Lexus department or Lexus division uh, developed that LFA supercar. Have you guys heard about that? The, the really fancy sports car we're doing, it's a really high-end vehicle. And one of the things we challenged this supplier to do was make us a lightweight, powerful stereo system for that car. And they came up with a solution that has now been uh, handed down to our Toyota lineup in the form of Green Edge technology. Uh, and what this allows you to do is have the same level or better of sound quality and consume less energy in doing it. And also save a bunch of weight. In this case here for Prius V, over four pounds we took off just in the stereo system. And once again, this can help add up to, you know, a mile per gallon or two if you start looking at this plus some of the other treatments we've done. It's all designed to help you get more efficiency out of it. I liken this system to those, like, fluorescent light bulbs. You can see, you buy those fluorescent light bulbs, and it'll say it has 60 watts of power, but it only consumes 5 watts of electricity. It's kind of the same thing. They have a more efficient amplifier that will produce the same levels of sound and consume less power in doing it. And then we have speakers that are, that are matched to this amplifier that will deliver that sound to your ears. So the whole system works to be lightweight and, and very, very uh, high fidelity in the sound. And then finally, we have our HDD navigation, our hard disk drive navigation systems. Uh, this is a new generation of navigation on all of our audio systems. Everything that you drove today with navigation has either a flash memory drive or a hard drive base on it, where previous generation systems for Toyota were DVD based. So these new systems are faster reacting, they process information quicker, and give you better service. And then of course Intune. Intune is something we're very excited about. And of course we've launched this already on Tacoma and Camry, and now you're going to see it on Prius V. And it really is the, the ability here now to start using those cell phone apps that everybody loves in your car and incorporate them on the head unit of the vehicle. And here's the process right here. This is one thing I get asked about a lot. You know, how do I get into it if I buy a new Toyota? What do I have to do? So uh, in this case here, you're going to buy your car. 
Now, hopefully you're going to have a, a smartphone that's smart enough. And in this case here, an iPhone, a late model iPhone, or a Blackberry, or a Droid phone are good candidates for this. You can register on the, on the uh, website, download the app, and then pair your phone to the car. And at that point in time, then now your engine system is, is operational. So then you would hop in your Toyota, and you would uh, take your smartphone, you would touch the uh, button to, to uh, open up your Intune app, put the phone down, and, and start driving. And then you now have the ability to not only listen to all the great radio features you have in your audio head unit, but then you can then access Intune apps if you want to do a Bing destination search, or you want to listen to Pandora, iHeartRadio, uh, internet radio stations. You can do that as you drive, and you can control these from the audio head unit. Bing is a great uh, app in that it allows you to use your existing map database, but then have constantly updated information for it. Because the Bing system, when you do a, an address search in Bing, it pulls the coordinates down in latitude and longitude and drops it on the map on your system. So if you think about it, when you buy a new car, you, your map data could be brand new, but it could be up to a couple of years old, depending on the map data supplier for that manufacturer. So why not have the ability to, to augment that with Bing and have constantly updated information? In addition to that, you can do movie tickets and open table uh, reservations on the car. And you'll have to stop for a lot of this, though, of course. We, we're not going to let you type while you drive. So there is a limit there. And that's actually one of the things we've done on purpose here. Because one of the, the challenges out there is right now is people are doing these things on their phone while they drive. And that's, that's extremely dangerous. So this allows you to have more accessibility, but at the same time, in a safe manner. And that's key. In addition to that, we're going to offer data services on these, these audio units, uh, such as fuel price lookup capability. Uh, you can track your stocks if you want, or favorite sports teams. You can get traffic updates and weather updates, too. Now, if you tried your Intune apps out today, one of the things you may have noticed was that the cars that have the display audio system uh, do not have as many apps on them right now. And there's a little story behind that. When, when we were developing Intune originally, we had it set up to be released on this, the, the, the high-end radio only. And we took this system out to the Consumer Electronics Show here in the U.S., and it was so popular that we did decide, you know what, we've got to put this on these other head units, too. We, we have to change our plan. So we have a later start with this supplier uh, to get the Intune apps out. So at launch here, you're going to see Pandora and Bing, along with the service apps, uh, movie tickets, uh, and uh, iHeartRadio, and the uh, Open Table apps will be coming a little bit later about the first quarter of next year. But we went ahead and decided let's just push forward and get it out. Because the other great feature about Intune is that as a manufacturer now, we can change the apps. If we decide we want to add more apps to our Intune menu, we can do that for you. And we can do that as you own the car. So the great thing now is you buy your Toyota product and it has an Intune radio, we can now update this by, you know, by allowing new apps to come on board. And you don't have to go buy a new car to do that. You can simply accept these updates and, and we can then offer uh, different or additional apps as we go. And you're going to see that as an example here on people that have display audio as we get into the first quarter of next year, all of a sudden now they'll have more apps available to them. And then a final uh, safety feature here uh, in the last part of it that we have for Safety Connect. This is also part of our Prius V5 with advanced technology package. And that's you know, a very easy uh, uh, button system here you can use to call for help. Uh, so you can get uh, you know, assistance if you've had an accident, uh, stolen vehicle locators uh, assistance, that sort of thing. So this is a nice feature to have once again on our high-end vehicle. Dynamic radar cruise control, talked a little bit about that. That's a very nice feature if you want to use cruise control and you have some traffic out there with you. And then also our advanced parking guidance system will help you parallel park. You can pull up next to the, the car you want to park to there, you can engage the system and pull forward and it will beep. And at that point in time, it takes control of the steering wheel and you just work the throttle and brake. So if you're somebody that has a fear of parallel parking, this is one way to go. And you get a little view here. It'll kind of tell you what it's doing, but all you have to do is just, just apply the brakes as it eases back into that spot. And it'll tell you if you've picked a spot that isn't, uh, isn't workable to. It will give you a little warning saying, no, don't do this. <laughs> we have seven standard airbags, including a driver's knee airbag. And our star safety system we talked about earlier, right? You know, the vehicle stability control, traction control, our smart stop technology, all these great features that hopefully none of you use today. Right? I hear some giggles and everybody, was, everybody behaves themselves, I hope. And then our pre-collision system, this is a nifty feature too. And if you have a vehicle with the advanced tech package, that same uh, radar uh, system we use for the cruise control can also be used to detect objects in front of the car. And if it detects that you are closing on an object with sufficient rate that it might be an issue, it will warn you. It will also pre-charge the brakes and build up brake pressure in the hydraulic brake system so that when you do apply the brakes, you get maximum braking effect. 
<clears throat> it will continue to warn you and even sense your seat belts up if it really feels like there's an imminent collision. So uh, it, it's, it's definitely a supplement to the, hopefully the, the driver will have enough sense to realize this when it's giving its first warning signs. But nonetheless, this is a great way to help mitigate uh, you know, uh, impact injury on the car if, if, uh, if you do have a collision. And then finally, I don't know if did anybody hear this today, we have um, a vehicle proximity notification system, and this is going to be coming out on all of our hybrid vehicles, and when they are operating in electric mode, there's a little whirring noise that we're going to now produce under the hood there with a the speaker to let people know that you've got, uh, you know, an electric vehicle in your proximity there. So when it's, you know, at about 5 mile an hour to about 25 miles an hour operating, you're going to hear this little noise. And this, I think, may be a federal mandate here coming up. <laughs> I, I have an invitation for you know what? Try that today and you tell me what you think. But it's supposed to sound like no, a motor. Like an engine, yeah, like yeah, like an electric motor. Uh, Chief Engineer Kai Akawa thinks it sounds like a UFO. That was his. He, he, has, he, of course, he giggles as he says this, right? But, but it has a little worrying noise to it. One of my favorite things I used to love to do is sneak up on my friends in the grocery store parking lot with my Prius and like, get up close to them and haunt my horn and try to make them drop their groceries. <laughs> this is going to stop me from doing that. So I'm a little disappointed personally. But, uh, I do that. And then the last couple minutes here, I want to take just to, just to explain a little bit about you know hybrid synergy drive. You know, people ask me on you know, Tuesday, what what is the best thing about hybrid synergy drive? What really makes these cars efficient? And I just want to give you a quick parting shot on this. You know, if you're driving along the road in your car, and if you have a matching marker that doesn't work, <laughs> it's, no hybrid, it's definitely not a hybrid magic marker. <laughs> Oh, let's see if this works here. I'm going to show you my tremendous art skills. This is a Volvo from the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> so you're driving along with your gasoline-powered car. Is anybody that's a physicist in here? No? Okay, good. You apply the brakes on this car to bring it to a stop. You've been up on the freeway, now you're going to come to a stop. You've got a lot of kinetic energy in the, the, the size and weight of this vehicle and the fact that it's in motion. When you stop this car, what happens to that energy? To heat. It goes to heat, exactly. You can't create or destroy energy, but you can change its state. So when you stop this car from freeway speeds to, to zero, it's heat in the brakes. And all this heat is lost to the atmosphere. It's gone. You cannot get that back. You had to burn gasoline to get up to speed, and now when you stop, you just lost all that kinetic energy that you had built up. Now, in the case of a hybrid synergy drive vehicle, any of our Toyota hybrid synergy drive vehicles, they can recover up to 30% of that energy you would lose to heat and can store it back in the battery and use that to reaccelerate the car later on. That is why the cars get better gas mileage. That is also why they tend to get better gas mileage in the city than they do on the highway because they do more of this regenerative braking. If you have a ceiling fan in your house and you supply it with current, it turns the fan, just like you would with an electric motor in a car. But if you were to get up there and somehow turn that fan fast enough with your hands, you could actually produce electric current. Every electric motor can also function as a generator, and that's what we do. So when you apply the brakes in your Toyota Hybrid Synergy Drive car, the car's hybrid system computer looks at how much brake pedal effort you've asked for, and then sends a little, uh, um, actually the, the brake computer notes this and says, okay, Rick here has pressed his brake pedal four inches, okay, so he's asking for X amount of brake force. It sends a very quick question to the hybrid system computer and says, hey, Mr. Hybrid System Computer, Rick is asking for four inches of brake pressure here, I need to have this much brake force. How much regen can we get? The, the THS computer responds back and says, you have this much regen capability. If that's enough to do the job, that's all you need, and that's all you get. So thus, the hybrid synergy drive vehicles may not use their hydraulic brakes as much if you know how to drive them well, and you can get very good brake pad life. Now, if Rick here has asked for more brake pressure than that, then the system will automatically amplify that with hydraulic brakes and supplement it. Okay, and that goes on, you know, very quick. This is all computer generated, okay? And in addition to that, I know someone may ask the question, well, what happens if your regenerative braking system fails? Well, the computer can de determine that and then stop you with hydraulics completely. And then also your analog brake system works too as an override to that. So, but it is it is all computer generated. And once again, if you then can utilize your hydraulic braking capability, you can maximize energy storage. So there are a few things you can do that are a little different. If you look out ahead of yourself while you drive and you coast a lot, or you can lightly apply the brakes, you can then maximize your regenerative capability. And of course, that's something that most of us have been taught not to do with a gas car because it's hard on the hydraulic brakes. It wears the pads out and heats the brakes up. 
put on an on a HSD vehicle here, you can do a little bit of that if you, if, you, if you watch it. And that can actually help you drive more efficiently. <laughs> Just a couple of tips there for you. With that, I'll thank you for your time, I guess. And then uh, let's see, we're going to have a little... Uh,